sharing my screen. Hi to everybody out there. I know you're out there because I can see your little circles down there. So um, thanks for having me and congrats to all of you through, for getting through uh, another, I guess, another tough semester, tough year. So um, fingers crossed that we can hopefully get back to some normal in-person instruction and collaboration in the fall. Um, so my name is Mel McKay and I have been a sessional instructor at um, ACAD AU Art since 2017. I've taught a couple different classes. The one that I've been teaching most recently has been entrepreneurship, which I love for a million reasons. Um, I am a, a, an entrepreneur. I actually launched my, uh, my business uh, the first day that I taught my first entrepreneurship class at, at AU Arts. So I was able to share in real time um, with my students what launching a new business was like. I took them along the ride with me, shared spreadsheets, shared my decision making with them. The second semester that I taught the class, I was in growth mode. Um, I was expanding my business to other cities. So again, got to share that experience with students. And then this past semester, I got to um, share what it was like to run an events-based business in a pandemic. So I had to, um, I, well, I kind of shared all of my pivot experience and we really dug into sort of how other businesses were learning to um, adapt in these crazy times. So I'm a um, AUR's instru uh, sessional instructor. I'm a freelance copywriter. And for those of you who probably work in more of the design world, you might know a little bit about copywriting. So typically I have worked in agency environments or as a freelancer where I come up with the words for any kind of marketing, advertising, design. Um, I started my copywriting experience in 2001, uh, worked for companies and then went out on my own in about 2007. So I still still do a little bit about, uh, of that, um, writing everything from radio scripts and uh, websites to naming businesses, writing social media, um, doing a lot of social media planning and stuff like that. Um, and one of the real, my real passions as a writer is coming up sometimes with the real foundational stuff of a, about a business. So the core values, what the brand story is, and really setting the tone um, for that business so that they can build their story and, you know, build website uh, e-commerce descriptions uh, and kind of really create a vehicle for them to hopefully uh, ride right off into the sunset with so copywriter instructor. I also have a side business my my, my entrepreneurship uh, Business that I started in 2017, which is uh, an events-based business I started in Calgary called camp hoo-ha and it's essentially like kind of like girl guides for adult women We earn badges. We learn new skills We take over a kid's summer camp usually every summer and do archery canoeing um, so I started in 2017 as just sort of a fun passion project and since then we're now hopefully going to be in about 17 cities uh, in the fall. We sell merchandise. I have a licensing and supply agreement for girls that start camp in other cities. So it started as this fun little side hustle and quickly uh, blew up into this bigger thing. So since COVID hit I have been uh, doing online events and just selling merch like crazy and I'm in the process of moving my store to Shopify right now too so um, so this is a good time for me to be chatting with you guys about this kind of stuff so um, a couple things before we get into I'm going to share my screen right away I'm at home I've got kids and husbands wandering around here so at any given time somebody might pop in and tell me they need a snack um so that and then as we go i think uh, lee if anybody's got any questions i hope you can just flag them with me and i can tackle them um sort of in real time and i'm happy to take some questions at the end too i am not an seo seo expert expert so um i'm going to kind of talk about some best practices uh from a creative standpoint especially when you're getting into selling you know really um personal work and there are a ton of people and a whole lot of online resources that can really dig into the ever-changing world of SEO and Google AdWords and stuff like that. So I'm not an expert in that area, but I am uh, copywriting is my thing. So I'm going to quickly share my screen. I'm a fast talker too, so I'll try to um, try to slow myself down and maybe just let me know you can see my screen. We're good. Yeah, we're so, good. Okay, I'm 
we're talking about the art of great e-commerce copy. And I mean, e-commerce copy is not my take on that or my approach to that isn't any different than writing copy for a number of other things. Um, we want copy to sound, um, you know, sound human. We want to sound like we're talking from person to person, not like a robot. Um, and we always want the copy to feel, again, that it is somehow connected to you, especially when it's work you've created. Um, so it all starts with your with your brand. And I think a lot of people, when they think about their brand, they think about a logo or a sign on the door, um, you know, or the colors you use. And I really think about brand, uh, especially because I'm a copywriter, too, as being far more robust and dimensional than um, than just, you know, what you see on a, on a business card. And I think that your copy, even if it's a tag or a description or a 25 character title, um, your, your brand really extends into all of these elements. And as, as, you know, as, as, as sometimes we want to just rush and do things really quickly and just add this text to your web store, um, when really the, the more these things all connect to each other and back to you and to your brand, the stronger your brand becomes and the more it can resonate with your customers. So I really think the words you choose and choosing them fairly carefully and thoughtfully um, is just as important to your brand as anything else you invest in. So, and also the story behind it. This is a profile picture I had taken for Camp Hoo-Ha when I first started in 2017. And I mean, the story behind it, which even looking at this photo, you can feel it all was just um, this idea of, you know, uh, of nostalgia. I started this thing because I was a 43 year old who was kind of starving for connection and friendship and fun and learning and all of these things. So um, so thinking through your story, and, and I know for a lot of you guys, you already have the products ready to go. So you kind of almost have to work backwards. But sitting back and thinking about the motivation behind everything and, you know, why you're creating the things you're doing and, um, you know, what's really driving the decisions you're making as an artist. So for me, it was all of these things that um, that eventually led to what became an events based business. But there was a really rich story um, that had a lot of meaning and meat to it and still really informs everything I do. So for me. You know, even jotting down some words about your your story or your brand. So for me, these things are still a part of everything I do. So it was about fun. You know, it was a camp for grown-ups. It was about warmth and nature, new skills, friendship, community, having common values, sharing things. And it was a lot about nostalgia. I'm a hugely nostalgic person. So nostalgia, you'll see in some of these other slides, or just, you know, it's 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 in everything I do. And when you're coming up with, whether it's your products or your story, you're, you know, writing a description for your store, I want you to think about, we're going to think about two different things. The first thing I want you to think about is think about you. So I want you to think about who, who you are as an artist. What are your core values? And these can be, you know, really uh, things that you want to kind of mull over and they should change and evolve as you grow too. You know, my core values are very similar to what you saw in the last slide, nostalgia and fun um, and connection. Um, so you're gonna wanna kind of think about what these core values are. Um, what makes you unique? So if you think about other people that are uh, doing something similar or making a similar product as you, what's different about you? What's different about your approach or uh, maybe the things that inspire you that nobody else can really say? And um, what are you making? So that's at the end of the day, what do you, what's the, the product that you're adding to your store? And think about why people want it. And again, think about your story. What are those motivational, those motivators behind the scenes that when somebody looks at your Shopify store or your, um, you know, a market you're at, they can't maybe, they wouldn't know what your story is, but when they start to look at your products, they can kind of feel that come out. And it's even the story sometimes when somebody stops you or asks you about a product, that can be what you always come back to as well as sharing a piece of that story when you're talking about uh, what you're selling. And I also want you to think about your customer too. Um, so think about, I mean, you're not going to have a perfect idea 
of who your customer customer is. And maybe there's a couple of different types of customers that you're uh, making products for. Where they live, uh, what they what they do for fun, maybe what kind of job they have, you know, what are their core values? What are some things that they think about when they're buying things or wanting to su support artists or um, local um, uh, makers? Uh, and what do they want? So what are they what are they looking for? Are they looking for you know things that are uh, sustainable? Are they looking for things that are quirky? Are they looking for things that are um, you know, that, that connect with them in terms of where they like to travel. So starting to think about what they want and even how they shop. Are they shopping online? Do they go to markets? Are they, you know, are they spending a lot of time, uh, you know, searching and studying and researching and stuff like that? So really start to think about how they're buying things um, and think about why, why would your product make them happy? So if they saw your product, you know, what is it about them and about your product that would sort of be a good match? You don't have to think about this super intensely, but starting to uh, starting to maybe think a bit about who it is that um, you're hoping to to get into your store. I just put this up here again to show a little bit about sort of uh, brand and, you know, another example of kind of a, a picture that generates that uh, that nostalgia, that sort of sense of fun. Um, and I another good thing to to do too is to, you know, put together a little bit of a blurb about your business. This is something that I wrote in 2017 that is still on my website, is still used for, has a lot of purposes. And it's, you know, just a sort of uh, 75 word kind of summary of what I do. It has the word nostalgia, memories, shenanigans, you know, childhood camp days. So if you're able to take your story, and sometimes I know when we tell our stories, we ramble on for an hour and a half because we're so <laughs> we're so passionate about what we do, but try to distill it down to this nice, tight little like hundred word, uh, you know, elevator speech about what you do. And this becomes a really helpful tool for you to start to figure out what these keywords are, or what some really um, critical descriptors are, or things that you're if you're constantly using the same words, then that's a sign that they're important to your story. So, um, so yeah, putting together a little bit of a blurb and that blurb, which, you know, you, you start with one and again, it can change and evolve as your, as your business grows or your, um, skill set grows. Um, and again, think about words that are part of your brand. You can write this little blurb and then you could take, you know, half an hour and try to pull out what those words are or, get a thesaurus out and see if there's better words. So for me, it all came down to that fun, authenticity, empowerment, nostalgia, camp inspired, comfort, vintage is a big one for me too. So, um, so these words will start to pop out and, um, and uh, become, give you some, a bit of a framework to build around. Um, and also think about the tone of your brand. I mean, as an artist too, everybody has a different voice. So try to think of what that voice is if you're to describe it. You know, are you a serious artist? Are you, do you do things that are really satirical and humorous? Is everything really nature inspired? So when you think about the voice of the work or the voice of, of your products, um, jot those down too. And that, you know, again, becomes, creates a bit of a blueprint for you so that you can, you know, start to, have some consistency in your messaging and some consistency in you know your website so again for mine the same words keep appearing you know fun authentic empowering youthful direct memorable simple and um and once you once you start start to land on these words you can sort of uh you know you can evolve again the tone and the, the tone a bit as well but it gives you a sense of who you are and the voice you want to use I even put a person to mind too, you know, if I'm thinking about who I'm going to be talking to or who my ideal customer is, I love Amy Poehler. So I was like, okay, who, if, who's my ideal customer for camp? This is who it is. What's she like? How would I talk to her if she's standing in my store and I'm trying to sell her a sweatshirt? Um, so creating sort of a, whether it's a celebrity or a, a friend of yours, put a picture of them up. And think about them as your customer and how, how would you talk to them and how you talk to them 
in a normal conversation should be really similar to how you talk to them in a product description on your website as well. Um, so I pulled some products too, because I just want to show you how I've broken out uh, some of my products. And for me, it was like I had the business and while well, the story came first, the why I started my business came, you know, first, obviously, then came the idea of the events based business. And once I figured out the business and the tone and the brand and all of that stuff, it was like, you know, the floodgates opened when it came to products I could sell. My core product is badges because um, when people come to camp, whether it's in person or online, they earn badges just like we did as kids. So uh, the camp badge is our staple product, but then I've been able to kind of roll out this, you know, really fun line of, uh, of camp products that everybody loves. And, um, and so I'm gonna walk through a couple of the products and how I've written the descriptions and come up with the titles. And again, these all still connect back to that initial story and the tone and the um, and the values and all that stuff. So this here is one of my best sellers. And right now, because I'm moving into Shopify, we're trying to really uh, create some consistency uh, with all of our SKUs so that from an inventory standpoint and business standpoint, when we're looking at information, there's um, it's easy to kind of look at uh, numbers and reports and stuff like that for for a couple of years. I just would name things whatever <laughs> and uh, it became a bit of a hot mess. So we call this the hoo-ha camp blanket. I've got a semicolon and buffalo is the color of this one. And then the description of this here, it says the camp blanket is here. Perfect for showcasing your badges. This uh, 62 by 78 inch queen size blanket features the same cozy blend as our sweatshirts. It's the ultimate way to stay warm while you hoo-ha from home. So you look at some of these words here, you know, we've got words like cozy, um, you know, staying warm, hoo-ha from home. So I always keep my descriptions in the same tone of voice that I do with everything else where there's a little bit of fun. You know, it feels like we're talking about camp, uh, you know, we're talking about warmth and cozy and all of uh, all of those things. I build in enough, you know, product information like the size of it and the critical things like that to to make sure they get the information that they want. But at the end of end of the day, you know, they're not buying a blanket because they want something to put on their sofa. They're buying a blanket because they want to feel the coziness that they had of childhood. So I often sort of focus more on the emotional benefit of the product than, you know, the size and the thread count or whatever. Because at the end of the day, I know that that's what people don't care about as much as they care about the story and the brand and the, the nostalgia of these things. Another example, this is a classic tea that we've had in our store for three years, super soft, gray, you know, it's got that kind of vintagey feel. So the, you know, the title, I call it the classic camp tea, unisex. Um, I, I like the word classic because again, it feels like it's been around forever. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. On my, there's something covering my screen here. Uh, it's our classic hoo-ha tea in perfect vintage hues. This unisex tri-blend tea is super lightweight and made with, you know, 50% polyester, 25% cotton, and 25% rayon. It drapes loosely and fits everybody perfectly. Paddle away campers. So again, some fun injected into the description. I've got words like classic and vintage. Um, I know that people love a tri-blend t-shirt and that's often something that people search for in terms of looking for tees. So I make sure I include words that I know are gonna help sort of um, with some conversions, but again, keeping the sort of the spirit of the, of the fun um, a priority. This was something that I came up with last year, which has been like one of my best sellers. <laughs> and it's, this is an idea of, you know, coming up with a way to, to take something and um, kind of create something bigger out of it. We all know what the, you know, there's the, these are Coleman coolers. You can buy and, and, and uh, logo Coleman coolers on a website that I use. Um, and, you know, when last year we were all, in quarantine, not knowing when we were going to get to be free. I knew everybody was sitting in their backyards or on their front steps, you know, having cocktails with the neighbors. 
Um, so I blew through about 150 of these in about a week and I called it the coal woman cooler <laughs> to give it a bit of a camp hoo-ha, you know, spin. Uh, everybody loves the Coleman brand. It's got this nostalgic quality to it. You know, it's got the Beaver logo. It's fun. It's bright. And in a time when nobody was having any fun, I really wanted to sort of push the envelope in terms of, uh, you know, the products I was selling and the way I was talking about them as well. And then the description for this one, filler up campers, this handy, hotter, cold, cold, cold Coleman third gallon jug is the perfect vessel for your summer cocktails it's got a flip top spout for easy sipping a wide mouth screw cap for easy uh refilling and cleaning and a handy handle and stunning hoo-ha artwork this one i pumped up a bit more of the features because i know that you know they need to know the size of it does it screw on how do you refill it how do you do all that kind of stuff so i built in a bit more of the feature stuff knowing that um the the idea of it on its own was still gonna sell but just building it a bit more detail so uh so those were three you know just some examples and i always feel like it's easier for me to to teach through examples so i know that you guys aren't selling the same kind of stuff as i am but hopefully that gives you some a sense of how to go from who you are to what you're making to how to um you know how to create some engaging interesting copy and and make it still feel like it's, you know, it's you living in that website description, telling that story and not just a website that's, you know, that feels impersonal and, um, and, uh, it, and is too salesy, so to speak. So uh, these are just some copy considerations. Again, this is really valuable information, I think, whether you're writing for a website, for, you know, a Shopify store, for a brochure. Um, so make sure it makes sense and this is really important for uh anything you're writing where you know there's there's got to be some keywords and you're trying to make sure that whatever you're writing is going to get you know ranked by google and is going to show up in people's google searches as a copywriter i'm often given you know copy decks from somebody who's had an seo writer write something and i'm like yeah it's got like a ton of keywords in it it just doesn't make sense <laughs> when you read something and we've all seen this before where you can tell where something has just been written in a way to get clicks um and it doesn't make any sense and it's no fun reading it and it's definitely not going to make an emotional connection with somebody either so uh so when you're when you're writing something you know make sure that it makes sense to you read it out loud have a friend read it whatever you need to do to make sure that it sounds like it's coming from a human and not a robot and not somebody just desperate to get clicks so yeah make sure it makes sense that's really important keep it short and sweet if you're you know if you're given 150 or 250 words or characters or whatever it is don't just use it all up because that's how much you've been given write what you need to write to say what you need to say in the best way possible my thought is that if it's there it just taking up space and not helping you then it's probably taking away from the from what you're doing so you know keep it short and sweet and then you know you're out when you're when you're done you don't need to just and then and then and then oh what about this let's add this like that you know find the the line where you want to get everything you need to get in there and then and then edit stop um be consistent so what i do or i'm trying to do too is and it helps you save work too where if you're you know if you create a really great example or template for a product description or a you know a web page or whatever um use you know copy that and use that as a template for your next product and then tweak it so maybe the you know the intro or the first part you know, it was always kind of similar and the, the middle changes depending on what the product is and then you change the ending and maybe it's always like, you know, interesting introduction, product features, and then, you know, um, something that's really, you know, uh, an engaging fact at the end. I don't know, just try to find a way to create some consistency. So somebody's looking through your whole store, going through a bunch of your products, they again start to feel like, you know, this is a legitimate brand. I like the way that they have, you know, there's there's a really interesting story there. It's consistent. It feels really, it feels professional. 
Um, so yeah, so try to look at things and make sure that you're not, you know, doesn't mean that everything has to be copied by any means, but there is some consistency. So if somebody just randomly looked at two of your product pages, uh, they would know that it was coming from the same person. Be interesting. So, you know, if you're, if you're creating work that's really out there and funny and crazy, like feel free to let that be part of the description too. I mean, we still want to make sense, like I said on the first slide, you know, but it's it can feel like a disconnect if you see this really crazy piece of art and then the description is really lame and you're not getting it's there, there becomes a disconnect between the words and the and the object. So make sure you're still creating some interesting copy or or not holding yourself back as you feel like the words need to be salesy or um, be really, um, you know, limited in, in terms of the tone. So feel free to be interesting and see what others are doing. Again, we don't want to copy what, what other people are doing with their descriptions or their stores, but, you know, surf around, see how other people are um, selling their work, words they're using, how they're kind of doing any storytelling. Um, it doesn't even have to be somebody who's doing the exact same thing. Just look at other brands that you admire, whether it's a coffee shop or a brewery or any of those places. Um, and if you're on your phone, just screen grab them and use it as like inspiration for stuff that, you know, hey, this really spoke to me when I read this, you know, caption on this Instagram ad made me smile. And then I clicked through to see, you know, to read more about the product. So that's good intel for you when something resonates with you personally. So, uh, so yeah, keep a little, keep a little library of that stuff for yourself. And put this, put yourself in the shoes of your audience. So, you know, if you're, again, the same thing when you're just scrolling through, you know, Etsy or Instagram or whatever, uh, think about how, how you shop and how you consume these, the information. And then imagine somebody coming to your store. Um, and again, once you think about who your audience is, what they're looking for, what makes them happy. So think about when you're writing your description, who that person is, and how the message and the words that you're writing would resonate with them. And maybe you even know somebody who is really in line with who your audience would be. You can always float some of the stuff by them and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Do you like this word? Um, and really it, it, it can kind of help you. You don't wanna just try to you know, only satisfy your audience. Your personality has to be injected in there, but it's nice to sort of create something that uh, feels personal to them and it feels uh, like it's going to resonate a bit more. Think practically. So, you know, as much as we still want to be interesting and creative and all that thing and all that stuff, but we still want to think about, uh, you know, somebody is buying this, what are they going to be doing with it after, right? So whether it's, you know, uh, whether it's a, a huge painting, how are, you know, how are they going, how are they going to be, uh, displaying it after or is it uh, how is it going to be packaged or whatever so think about the practicalities of what you're selling to and how you can make sure that that's clear and there's no questions about uh, you know what the work looks like or you know what the um, how it's going to be displayed any of that stuff if there's any practical information you want to still make sure you're getting that across as well and then again, write emotionally. So you can think practically, but still write in a way that feels like it's coming from an artist. It's coming from somebody who's, you know, you guys are so passionate about everything you do. So we want that to still feel like it's being, that there's space for that in there. So I'm a super emotional person. And I always feel like I, uh, especially it's my business. This is my place to kind of just uh, to, to, to be myself and to let people know that, I love what I do and that's typically why people want to buy stuff from you is when you when you show that emotional side as well. So think practically, you know, share any of the practical pieces of information that they need to know, but also feel free to write emotionally. And again, don't be afraid to sell. A lot of times I know it feels like, you know, you don't want to be over the top and you don't want to feel like you're being too pushy. But I mean, especially in a in an environment right now where the sort of global uh, global uh, economy has fully opened up in the last year where people can now can and are shopping 
you know, anywhere. We're, we're now doing curbside pickup. We're buying and exploring, you know, retailers from anywhere. It's becoming easier and easier. So, so the market gets a lot more competitive and making sure that when people land on your store, um, that they know that you, you're selling stuff. So making sure that you're, you know, the words and the, the, um, the way that you're selling stuff is still, don't afraid to ask for it because, uh, otherwise there's going to be somebody else that's going to ask, ask more than you. Um, so that's about all I had to share. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mel. That was really great. Um, okay. In that case, it looks like we're actually really right on schedule. So um, why don't we just open it up to questions here um, for Mel about, you know, any topics regarding branding. If you guys have any questions, like, please raise your hand, um, speak out or, you know, use the meeting chat. Uh, we got tons of time left in this, so we can just use the rest of it for Q&A. Hi, uh, could I ask a question? For sure. OK, so um, this is my first show and sale. And I don't really like exactly have an established brand identity. Yeah. So I'm not really sure like how I would put myself out there because I don't really have a specific identity yet for my work. Well, this is exciting because then you get to just use words for now. <laughs> and again, I think that that's, I mean, sometimes again, people want to just, they want a logo, right? It's like, I need a logo, a logo, a logo, which again, I totally agree you need, but exploring the story can sometimes, you know, exploring who you are through words and coming up with a bit of a, um, a summary of you, of who you are can then make that can ensure that when you do a logo and create a visual identity it's going to be a lot stronger that's that's just the writer in me trying to say that the words are just as important as the visual so so i would say yeah you, i would say you can still create or start to create your brand and your story without the the logo now and and again know that when you get to that point you're going to be better prepared okay cool thank you thank you uh, we got a question in the meeting chat from Terry. Any advice for fine art descriptions when you maybe don't want to totally spell it out? Um, I think this is when you don't want to totally spell it out. Well, and I, I think this is a place where you can have some have some fun, um, and. Again, you know, you don't want to spell it out and maybe this is a place for more story and being a bit more um, putting it more on the reader to kind of like bring something to the table or putting some questions on them so that it becomes a bit more engaging that way. Um, so I yeah, so I think you could kind of have a bit of fun and maybe just it can be more about your backstory that again leaves this gap so you're not spelling it out but gives them something and that connects back to the piece i guess if that makes sense and we also have a hand up um from vivian go ahead hi vivian hi um so you mentioned that you're moving to spotify are you Is moving away to spotify um, or shopify i mean <laughs> Are you moving away from Etsy or like why, what is the reason that you're making the change? I'm just curious. So, I started, when I started my business in 2017, I started it on a shoestring budget and I had friends that could do websites, you know. So I just did a Wix store because at that point I was mostly doing, um, just selling tickets for events online and all of my all of my retail was done through Square at the at, at events, like through point of sale. Um, so what happened is since COVID hit, my business has been 100% online sales. And Wix is just, it does, it's not as robust as Shopify, doesn't have the slick back end. It's just, it's not a super great system at work. It's got a whole bunch of other functionality things that I need. So... Uh, so that's why I'm making the change. Um, and Shopify, just if I think if you're selling anything online, it just seems to be it seems to be what everybody's using. So 
that's why I'm making the change and I'm not super excited about moving everything, but I'm doing it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, we got a couple different hands up. Um, I'll try sure. to go in order of uh, who went first. I think Anya had her hand up first and then we have Anna. Hi, Mel, it's Anya. Hi. Um, I'm curious, so I'm starting out um, same thing. I'm not sure if this is the way to go even. I'm second year in fiber and yeah. I'm just a little overwhelmed with the branding. I have business cards. Do I need yeah. stickers? Do I need packaging? Do I need all these things? Where do I start and what's enough? To so kind I'm, I'm going to give you some advice that uh, uh, some people would probably say isn't great advice, but what I always did was like, I never knew moved forward until I had enough information to know that that was the right direction to go in. Even in terms of a business plan, I'm so glad I never did a business plan because I've had to basically redo my business model three times in the last three years. So I would say like, just, you know, just really live in the space you're in, like really just give yourself this time to just think about stuff and like not commit to things like get 50 business cards, get a hundred business cards, don't order 10,000 yet. Right. Like there's so much that can change and grow um, that it's nice to give yourself that space to, to, to make those changes. Like, and now, I mean, I'm at a point now where like we've been doing online events and I, I have to figure out what's going to happen in the fall. We're going to do a hybrid of like some small group and then have an on like all that stuff. And it, it's, it's like, I'm not even gonna freak out about anything that's happening other than moving my my store to Shopify because it's just it, I know it's gonna be kind of messy and hard. So I'm giving myself the space to to move through it in a way that's not gonna be super stressful. So um, so I would just say just you know you know make small moves forward, but feel free to change things, add things, and again play with the language. Spend more time on the products you're making. And you know, figuring out uh, who you are instead of investing a bunch of money on stickers and stuff, which you might hate them in a year or six months, and then you're going to have a whole bunch of inventory sitting in your office. So that's my advice on that. That's actually great, very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to jump on that real quick. So um, for our show and sale artists um, who are with us today. Um, just so you know, we do have packaging available for you and we do have several resources if you are in need of business cards or other things. And those will be available on our Teams page. For those of us not joining in show and sale this year, you're absolutely welcome to visit those pages and find out these different links that our community has shared with each other about, you know, getting a small run of business cards or trying out different products. So we're also trying to, you know, create a community, keep in touch with each other as artists and as students to help each other out if there are great deals on you know branding things when we cross that road together so just want to get let you guys know about that um uh, looks like we got a hand up from anna um hi so i have two questions the first one is if your work doesn't have a cohesive visual look how would you go about fixing that and the second one is I have a red bubble, which is an online store. And I was wondering how would you go about advertising it to get more interest for the products you're selling? Um, so your first question, do you sell different types of products? Or are you selling the ta same type of work just with different, different uh, aesthetics from piece to piece? It's the second one, like um, it's different designs and stuff for like different kinds of products. And I think that that could be um, like the sort of branding person in me is to kind of almost create little kind of like profiles for each of them where you could still create kind of mini brands and have a bit of a story about each of them. So that, you know, if you have an, a, 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 an overarching brand or name of your business, there's still, there's still some threads that tied those things together and then hopefully they still connect back to you. So if there was still a way to, to, to connect the pieces together within their own kind of silos, I guess, if there's any, um, if there's any consistency between some of the ones that do share the same look, otherwise just embrace it and make that part of the story. Like there's got to be some interesting motivation between, you know, why you're creating stuff 
that way. So that can actually be something that you embrace and turn into a benefit as well, where there is, you know, you're the type of person where, you know, you're not, you're, you're not always going to, you know, have the same stuff appear in your store, or if you're at a gallery or an event, there's going to be these kind of crazy surprises based on where you're at in life. So I think there's a couple different ways you can try to find a way to create some more consistency around it, or you can just embrace the sort of uh, spontaneity, of, spontaneity of it all. And then your second question was uh, just how to get how to how to get your store uh, some more traffic. Yep. So I have two points on that. So my the one thing I've always taught my students was you basically need two things to be successful and uh, in this sort of arena you need to be you need credibility and you need, need visibility. Credibility is basically just being really good at what you're doing. Like, are you good at what you're doing? Are you, you know, is the stuff that you're selling good, you know, interesting, whatever. And then visibility means you just need people to be able to find you. So, you know, if you're already good at what you, what you're doing, you've got one thing done and now you need to, you need visibility. So you need people to be able to find you. Now, if you've got oodles of money, uh, you can, you know, hire somebody to help with SEO or invest in, you know, Google AdWords to, to really kind of help uh, um, fuel your online store so that you get up the Google rankings. Um, and not everybody has has that type of, you know, resources to be able to do that. So the other thing you could do is most websites. I'm not sure about Red Dot, but most of them will typically have. Uh, either some support or a whole bunch of resources on how to make sure that you're, you know, incorporating some keywords. There's meta tagging, which, you know, which isn't visible on the website, but it helps with your Google rank. So you might want to look into the platform's support to see what they offer, you know, free or within their um, support to help you sort of just organically create enough uh, keywords and tags within your page to kind of help you and then everything else like you know your social media posting frequently and adding tags to that you know trying to see if you can get some other people to share your work um, Mandy Stobo is one of my super good friends I don't know if any of you follow her she's bad portraits on social media um, and she's been hugely successful in her career she's a illustrator, painter, animator, speaker, does a whole bunch of cool stuff, a lot of VR work right now. And she's just a total marketing queen and um, has really done a good job of making herself really visible, especially in a market right now where everybody's online and everybody's got cool stuff to sell. So that's my answer to that. Hey, okay, well, thank you. Yeah. All right, we got a couple of different questions here. So we got Vivian first with a hand up, and then we've got um, another question in the meeting chat that I'll bring up afterwards. Quick, go ahead, Vivian. Um, this mm -hmm. is maybe a little bit similar to an earlier question, but I have like two parts to my practice right now. One is the ceramics component, which I think would work really well with a branding approach. And then the other is uh, painting. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if the customer base would be the same. And I haven't really seen paintings branded as yeah. much. So should I keep them completely separate and even have like separate Instagram accounts and maybe even separate websites or? I, I would not because you're the common, like your story is what brings these together, right? Like you're the products are just the, the, those are the things you make but ultimately your brand should be about you as the person that's that's making these things and your your story right so i would look for some connection between the two you know like what are the you know what from a story perspective or approach perspective or inspiration perspective kind of can bring those together so that you know they are um you know, separate but under the same umbrella so that you have a website and you could still tell your main story on that home page and then you can have just two different, you know, uh, navigations for the separate pieces. But you want to keep them all together because who knows, that customer that's buying uh, the painting might want to buy, you know, something else from you that's not related. So you really want to kind of keep them together so that 
it, things start to get really uh, a bit messy if you've got multiple website and multiple channels and you yourself might not, you know, m might find it hard to manage everything. So your customer is going to have an even harder time trying to figure out where they can get what from you. So again, uh, I'm going to put Mandy's, um, I'll put Mandy's uh, website in the chat box after, but she's a great example of somebody who does a million different things, things that are tonally different, things that are aesthetically different and has managed to still keep this bad portraits kind of like look and feel, uh, you know, her mark is the same no matter what she's doing, even though there's a, diff a bunch of different products. So, so yeah, do don't create a bunch of different things. You're the, try to come back up to where you are and it's like, okay, from a storytelling perspective, um, you know, I, you're the brand and how do we, how do we tell this story? And then, then that gives you license to create whatever you want, right? Like if you're going to do keychains or sell podcast, whatever, you want to keep that door open to be able to keep building rather than oh, all of a sudden now I need 10 different websites. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah that's great. I'll read out Anna's question. Yeah. In the meeting chat. So as someone solely on Instagram, what's the threshold for moving to a website? I sell a small amount through Instagram, but I'm too busy during school to keep up with consistent products. As well, should we have a logo and business cards ready for show and sale? I answered the second part in the meeting chat, but I was wondering if you could talk about um, selling on a website, selling on Instagram, and kind of what's the point to make that jump? So here's the nice thing about Instagram now is you can add your store, right? And I, I for me, it was really easy because my Instagram account is connected to my website. So the minute I went add store, it just automatically populated everything from my my website store to Instagram. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming there's probably an easy way to add your store to your Instagram account. The other thing is there's like, you know, between like Squarespace, you could probably do a simple store in like an hour. If all you wanted was your, a picture of you and a blurb about you and your store, those templates are dirt cheap. Um, and I mean, I've done a, 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 an online store for a friend over like two glasses of wine. It wasn't anything fancy, but it was functional. So again, look at the time you have. And if you're just like, I love Instagram, that's where I want to spend all my time then spend your time there and give yourself, you know, figure out while you're using Instagram, you know, what, what is going to serve you and what your next step should be. Cause the last thing you want to do is create an online store that you're like, this is a pain in the ass. I don't have time to manage it. And now I've wasted, you know, I've been spending 30 bucks a month on a store I'm not using. So, so figure out, you know, where, what you have time for, put your effort into that and don't make those next steps until you've kind of mastered the last one or have a really clear idea of where, where you want to go because managing, you know, social media and then, you know, if you've got a store and you've got, you know, an e-newsletter, all of these things still take time and um, you want to kind of put your time into the places that make the most sense. And for your logo and business card, again, it's like, you know, they don't rush into it just because people think you need a website and a logo and a business card and all that stuff. Like when you're ready and you're at a point where you're like, okay, hey, world, I know who I am. I've got a logo in mind and it's going to be the greatest logo ever. And I'm ready to come out and just, you know, fully ready to take on the world then do it. But if you're still just like, you know, figuring some stuff out, then just lay back and do your Instagram and kind of, you know, keep figuring out who you are because you've got lots of time to figure that stuff out. And all of these tools just keep getting better and cheaper and easier to, to learn as we go. Like even over the last couple of years, like, you know, Shopify, you know, you no longer have to do a custom website on WordPress and hire a developer. Like I'm doing my whole website by myself with somebody just helping me on the back end, just populating it. So, um, so there's lots of time for that. All right. And just to add on to that, for those of us who joined yesterday in our free D artwork pricing workshop, we mentioned previously um, being able to price your artwork, keeping in mind administrative costs. So as Mel said, like if you're spreading yourself out like really thin between a lot of different social media channels, 
Um, that's not just, you know, like hard on you to be able to manage those, but it also, you know, affects, you know, your administrative costs. So if you want, if you decide to do something, do one thing and do it really, really well, get comfortable with that first. Mm -hmm. um, don't, as Mel said, you don't need to rush into it. Um, for show and sale this year, we have a lot of things going on, but we don't expect students to have a fully branded inventory at all. We're just encouraging you to think about, you know, like where are the first steps and wherever you are at by the time of show and sale, you know, whether you have a solid brand or a logo or whether you're still working on some stuff, that's totally okay. Another thing you could do too at this point, just because it's fun to experiment, is if you're writing some product descriptions, whether it's for the show and sale or for your own website or later on, even on Instagram, it's like, play around with different language and do two totally different descriptions and sort of a b test them you don't you're not going to have like you know other than seeing how many people have viewed it or which product they've clicked on or how much time they've spent on a page it's really interesting too to see what's resonating with people i often just play with the the, the location of my products in my store too to just try to manipulate um you know what what products are going to be seen first and like you know, again, playing around with which one goes in which order when I send a newsletter. So this is a, a good time to, 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 you don't, you don't have a lot of things that you're, you know, it's, this is in the high risk environment. So it's a fun time to play around with language and um, yeah, just putting things out there and seeing how people react to it. Absolutely. Um, we've got a hand up from Anna. Go ahead, Anna. Is, is Anna there? Hello. If you prefer, um, you can absolutely chat, uh, type in the meeting chat if your mic has some issues. There's a question here from Sophia. Can I read this one out here? Yeah, let's jump to Sophia first. And then Anna, when you have time, um, just type it on the meeting chat. So Sophia is asking, what should we do with the branding if the work we're selling is very different from all the other work we make, post and promote on social media? Is there a point in branding at all if this is not really the direction we're going? For example, I do comics, but I also have a few paintings there. Um, um, and I think that it becomes, it becomes a, a thing of how you kind of package that right because if you're always if you're posting stuff and everything looks and feels very Sophia and then all of a sudden you're just like hey here's this you know totally out there comic thing again it's in how you position it like whether it's you call it a um you know a um uh you know a special project or whatever you you, you prep people for like Hey, I've got this, you know, fun thing that I tried as a as part of this experience or whatever. So that you you don't want people to always just expect you to keep delivering the same work over and over. And in fact, a lot of your followers or potential customers kind of get excited when you switch it up too. So um, so I and when you say is there a point at branding it? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but. I would never brand anything totally different from any of the other work you're doing. I would just message it or package it in a slightly different way so people know, hey, it's still me. This is something I've created. It's different than what I usually do, but that's okay because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do things that are surprising. So that's how I would approach that. Awesome. Uh, looks like we got about five minutes left in our meeting. So let's let's go for kind of the uh, last few couple of questions. I'm not sure, Anna, if you're still there, if you're able to type in the meeting chat or um, unmute your mic. Um, in the meanwhile, does anyone else have questions for Mel while we still have her? I was going to also just say one other thing too. Terry just commented and said she's dropped watching, uh, following certain IG accounts because they're posting the same stuff every day. And I think that's totally true. Like, watch how you react to things 
and um and and note those too for your own business like if you're seeing people and you're like oh it's so boring they're posting the same stuff every day well you know think about how you're like oh well i kind of do that too so break out of those things and also the the best way to like the best way to kind of learn um and this is also something i, sh I shared with my students is like just to watch how other businesses are doing things and how they're reinventing themselves or you know pivoting we've been using that word so much or um or creating or you know evolving their voice or changing how they're working because of you know how things have impacted us through COVID or, you know, they've had to close down their store. So now they're going online. How did they, how did they, they do that? So really watch how other people do it and how you react to that and note that for your own business, because you're, you know, how you, how you see other people, um, those, those reactions are all really that those, that's all really good information for you to have. Um, for Anna's question, I'll take that one. Yeah. So Anna, um, since that's a specific question for show and sale, I'm just going to ask you to quickly send me an email afterwards and you and I can absolutely chat with that about that. Um, since I know that this workshop is mostly just about the branding and is open to non show and sales students. So if you wouldn't mind just sending that to me after the meeting, I'd be happy to answer that. And looks like we got a little bit more time left. Do we have any last questions for Mel today or any comments? Um, about the presentation. All right, well, I think that's it for now. And I mean, thank you so much, Mel. It's been an absolute pleasure um, having you here. It really has been. And I'm really happy to see so many students here engaging. I hope that you guys found that it was a great experience. I know that, you know, I'm so happy that Mel's one of our sessional instructors and that she agreed to do this. Um, Mel has also sent me uh, a part of the copy of the presentation. I believe it was the slide about, you know, just the questions um, to ask yourself. And what I'll do is I'll put together a really quick worksheet um, with that. So if any of you students would like to utilize that worksheet for yourself um, just to get a general idea of your branding. Um, I'll be posting that on the Teams page as well. If you have missed any part of this meeting or your friends have missed it, that's OK. <laughs> It'll be on the virtual show and sale Teams page later. Uh, we're just running into some technical issues, but we hope to have this recording up by tomorrow morning. So stay tuned. Thank you guys. I'm going to go in the shop once the website is up. I'm going to poke around and look at some of the copy and um, have a, a great summer and um, best of luck next year. And just, yeah, and just my parting words with you guys is just, you know, don't get, I know, I know school can be super stressful and it's, everything is really intense right now, but just like lean into it and just really use this as a time to have fun, explore and and let yourself just you'll get to where you need to be when you need to be there. And um, yeah, there's going to be more shit storms ahead. So just make sure you're ready for them. <laughs> That's my, <laughs> my learning experience over the last year. It's half the fun and building the resilience through all of this is uh, has been a, a gift in some ways. But anyways, have a great uh, afternoon and uh, thanks for having me, Leah. No problem. Thank you, Mel. OK, bye bye. Bye. Hey, um, I'm assuming the three D uh, pricing meeting is recorded and posted on the AUR, or sorry, the show and sale um, team page as well, right? Uh, it will be posted soon. We just ran into some technical issues regarding the posting. It has been recorded. Uh, we're going to have it ready hopefully by tomorrow morning for everyone to view. Oh, okay. No, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, sorry for the delay. Usually we get it done within 24 hours, but we just had a little bit of a hiccup. Um, for the rest of you sticking around, I'm just going to ask you all to leave the meeting since that will formally end the recording.